What's up guys? It's been a long time since I last actually vlogged on my bike and I'm back again with another topic. The DRZ is a pretty popular bike and from time to time uh, well my viewers ask me that uh, they are intending to buy a DRZ in Singapore or Malaysia or whatever okay it, it's still a popular bike even though it's not being sold in Singapore it's, it's still sold in the US uh, and people still want it and everybody asks once in a while uh, since you own a DRZ why don't you you know tell us what are some of the things to look out for uh, when buying one of these machines are there any uh, you know things to look out for problems that are easily associated with the DRZ itself so uh, let's find a spot I guess uh, to talk about the DRZ then I know there's a good spot here somewhere that I always you know go to yeah over here so let's stop by this place and uh, we'll talk about the DRZ for a little bit this this is a, a beautiful place that I come to once in a while to relax take photos practice my photography anyway a uh, bit of of uh, background about the bike that I'm riding. It's a 2007 DRZ 400 SM. A lot of people are asking me uh, about any specific things related to this bike that they should look out for before they buy. And uh, I do have a few things in mind. Of course, the first thing you want to do is take note that it is a carbureted bike. A lot of new ride, new bikes nowadays, a lot of new riders have only known fuel injection. Uh, they've never seen a carbureted bike before, but here you are. DRZ 4 and SM is a carbureted bike. So all carbureted bikes uh, do tend to suffer from wear and tear over time. So for a 10-year-old, actually it's 11 years old by now, for an 11-year-old bike like this, uh, issues t do tend to pop up. So when you're buying a... DRZ from somebody else second hand and roughly the same age 10 years 12 years uh, maybe even 13 years the, the SM came out in 2005 so you want to ensure that the owner the previous owner uh, ensures the bike is cold that means when you meet meet up with him and you touch the crankcase over here or the other side the, you know the golden portion that I have I have over here if it's too hot to touch, that means you burn yourself on it when you're touching it, then that is not the way to test it. You must make sure to tell him that that crankcase must be able to be touched by bare hands, it must be cold. The reason is that, you know, uh, DRZs tend to perform, I mean, if there is an issue with the cylinder or the carburetor, they tend to perform better after they are warmed up. But from dead coal, it's usually extremely difficult to start. So uh, this is one of the issues that faces uh, an old bike like mine, uh, especially if it's not well maintained by previous owners. I mean, it's gotten a bit better uh, after I've done a bit of maintenance on it, but the issue is still there. So for all of, th all of you who are intending to buy a DRZ, or any carbureted bike in general, make sure the bike is cold and try and start the bike. If the bike it is taking a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort to, to start, even with this, the choke pulled out, uh, it might be a lot of issues, but I usually point to the carburetor as a the first sign of, of an issue. The next problem that you might want to take a look at is probably the pet cock. The stock pet cock on DRC should follow like this, an on, a prime and a reserve. This is what you call a vacuum pet cock. The DRC comes to a vacuum pet cock stock. If you see an on and off as well as a reserve, that is a gravity fed pet cock. Those are not stock. Uh, 
a lot of dirt riders, uh, they do prefer to switch to a gravity fed petcock instead of vacuum fed petcock for some reason uh, but personally i still i still think a vacuum petcock is better for day-to-day -day use but the vacuum petcock itself is not uh infallible it, it's one of the things that's prone to failure on the drz where you know the the vacuum line itself uh has stopped operating so even on on by right if it's on on and you pull out this line over here there should be no leak apart from what's already in the line itself there should be no leak because on on it only feeds petrol when the bike is running so the carburetor has a vacuum line so as petrol is fed into the engine it produces a vacuum that opens the valve on this petcock that continues to feed petrol in when the bike is not operating there's no vacuum you know then the, the valve here is shut off and petrol won't won't continue to flow so on 40 petcocks like this either on on or reserve if they are on these two positions they will they will leak continue to uh, flow petrol out and you should take note that uh, this means the petcock is broken and it may or may not be a problem if compounded with another issue on the carburetor. So if the carburetor's uh, float, float needle over here, this is the, the float bowl. Okay, if there's a float like the toilet sink in your, the, the toilet bowl in your toilet. Okay, when you press a flush, the water goes down, the float goes down and that opens up the valve to allow water to come in. Same principle applies here. If the float on your DRZ doesn't work okay and the, the the vacuum valve here doesn't work then you will it will mean that every time the bike is not running uh, petrol will start flowing down from the tank into the float bowl up the carburetor and flooding your engine and then well you you have tear down the engine and 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 repair it so take note that this is uh, functioning and another way is, uh, of course, sometimes they might sell with a functioning petcock dent, but the float, of course, doesn't work. So it, it rarely happens on a DRZ. The float, float usually is fine, but uh, just to test, uh, you could always keep the thing on prime, all right, and let the, the, the petrol flood the, the float chamber if the previous owner starts... Uh, you know, protesting that action, then you know that there might be an issue there. This, what do you call this? The speedometer? Yes, yes, the dashboard in general. Uh, of course, as you can see over here on my DRZ, the dashboard is a aftermarket dashboard. Uh, and that's because the original dashboard is prone to several issues. And one of those issues is the backlight starts to fade as it ages and the LCD, the liquid crystals in it, starts to leak out. So that's a huge problem. So you might want to check that out. It's pretty obvious. Uh, just take note of it. It's, pre it's pretty obvious. So it's not something that an owner can hide. Another, but one thing that owner can hide is even if the, the, the backlight and the uh, liquid crystal display is still functioning, it's not leaking, uh, one thing does happen sometimes on bikes that have you know been ridden a huge amount of times for a very long distance over a long period of time like 10 10 years is that the odometer and the trip meter they no longer count especially on odometers that once hit a uh, hundred thousand some by right once it hits a hundred thousand it's supposed to cycle back to zero and then start all over again but in some cases they hit a hundred thousand and they don't count so if you see an odometer that has hundred thousand flat on it okay and that that is a sign that you know this uh speedometer this dashboard in general is already not serviceable because the trip meter itself won't count as well and you because it doesn't have a, a fuel fuel gauge you are mostly relying on on the trip meter to tell you how much miles you have left on the current tank of fuel that you have. So one more thing that I would recommend that 
everybody takes a look at uh, if they can. Okay, in Singapore, it's usually not not something you are able to do if you are buying from another guy. But if you're buying from shop, maybe it's possible. Okay, uh, one thing you might want to check is that. Okay, first thing is the DRZ is a supermoto. If you buy a DRZ S. Roughly the same bike, just different suspension setup and, and wheels, right? These two bikes, they tend to be ridden roughly, they tend to be ridden off-road, tend, and in Singapore, where it's uh, wet, it's humid, they tend to be ridden in conditions that, you know, where water gets onto electrical parts. Uh, and most importantly, uh, that would be these plug boot, wires, batteries. Uh, and the thing is, most of these things on the DRZ, they are not fully enclosed or not enclosed well enough. So water does get onto them. And if at all possible, do try to take off the tank. Do try to take off the left side panel. Ensure that the connections on the battery are not corroded badly. Okay, if it's, you know, slightly uh, white, grayish, that's fine. If it's totally rusted, you know, that's an issue, especially if it's the direct leads to the battery because that will require you to re-harness a significant portion of the bike. If the if the rust is on, on the battery itself, it's fine. Just replace the battery. But if it's on the on the leads on the on the battery, uh, that's a bit of an issue because you have re harness a huge portion of the bike and it's not exactly cheap. It's about three hundred dollars, whereas replacing a battery is only like what, seventy bucks? Uh, another thing is, if you can remove the tank, remove the tank because what you want to check is the plug boot. Okay, you want to pull out the plug boot in and check the the spark plug. Okay, it's not really a spark plug that's usually the problem. What you want to check is the boot itself. The boot itself is basically like the the tip of the wire that holds that connects the spark plug, and it's usually wrapped in a rubber, you know housing the rubber housing you want to check for cracks uh, because drz is a pretty open bike they tend to be ridden in harsh conditions especially in singapore's weather uh, the rubber tends to be degraded after a significant period of time you want to check for cracks because this will allow water to get into the plug boot and corrode that little wire that connects the boot to the spark plug so what happens is that this um, Corrosion may cause a, a lot of resistance to build up and you know the, sp the current doesn't flow as well as a clean boot. So what will what will happen to this bike is that you'll find that it runs poorly, the bike is hard to start. So if if when you try you test the bike out it's hard to start or it's um you know, it runs poorly in general. That might be one of the causes. Uh, it's not a difficult thing to fix, but, you know, it's an, it's sort of an indicator that, you know, the bike isn't well kept. All right. It, it's in shit condition. The, the previous owner has been thrashing it and it's not taking care of it. So that's one thing to look out for. So another thing to look out for is, as I said in a previous video, you know, there there is a slider here this is a bottom chain guard a top chain guard okay there is a plastic slider here that protects your swing arm and then there's a bottom slider here that protects you know the black portion inside here that protects your bottom chain guard okay sometimes these items may be missing depending on the previous owner they do tend to get lost very easily so take note of that another thing to take note of is this item here this is supposed to be your helmet lock all right as you can see over here mine uh there is supposed to be a key barrel here all right if you know this i'm not sure if you can see it but there's supposed to be a key barrel here uh some don't don't work okay basically i've seen some bikes uh where the where the, the barrel is still there but it doesn't turn it doesn't work mine is just totally missing Sometimes uh, it, it looks fine, but when you stick it in, it's stuck. So take note. It's not not a huge deal. Most people I know probably don't even bother 
uh, hooking the helmets to this thing but one thing to consider if you are a, a nitpick about that another thing to look out for is the ignition barrel ignition barrel on these things are pretty flimsy okay by right when you put the keys in they should have a satisfying click to on and then to the parking lights all right but in some rare cases the ignition barrel has been worn down so much that when you turn it it just feels like a mushy turn so take, take note of that uh, you might want to insist that the shop that you're buying from changes the ignition barrel and when they do so they must change three things the ignition barrel the the tank cap as well as if this one is still working the lock over here there is a a set that's supposed to change all three at, at the same time if you don't you ch if they cheap out on you and they wouldn't change on the ignition barrel when you tell them to then you end up having two sets of keys one key for this and one key for the the tank which like me uh, it happens to me other things to look out for is especially on a second hand bike look out for this okay you see this nut over here this little screw thing that's attached to the to the cylinder the the blockhead this is the manual cam chain tensioner by default stock the drz comes with an automatic cam chain tensioner if by it new okay most people if you were to just ask any drz owner they would say get rid of the acct and buy an mcct if you buy a drz second hand especially one that has been used for quite a while okay it's fine if you don't see this but always try and prioritize bikes that have this because this will make uh you know maintenance in future for you a lot easier because the ACCT is really difficult uh, to make to help you in maintaining your cam chain the MCCT makes things a lot easier for you uh, and if it comes on the bike already that is a few hundred dollars you know that that saved that you would eventually have to spend anyway just to make life easier for you anyway apart from that there really isn't much to talk about you wouldn't really have not much uh, problems with the engine itself is reliable bike come on uh, so there really isn't much to talk about in terms of the engines reliability electronics because there's no electronics to talk about in the first place so other than those issues that I've talked about you really have no no other things to worry about just you know look at the bike check it out do your general checks um, that you would do with literally any bike and then those uh, DRZ specific things that I've talked about previously and you should be fine uh, most DRZs in Singapore even though they are uh, treated pretty badly are still in much better condition than in most other countries so if you like this video and would like to support my channel links are in the description below if you would like to buy a t-shirt please do uh, or donate a bit of money to this channel by all means and of course, I'll see you next time. And remember to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.